Hello everyone, Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo here for another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. And today, it's actually going to be a Let's Pew Pew. Here I am in my Gladius in the PTU. And I'm flying with, of course, my X-55 Rhino HOTUS. And HOTUS stands for Hand on Throttle and Stick. The premise behind having a HOTUS is that almost every single one of the functions that you could do in the game should be mapped to one of the buttons that are on the joystick. Now for this game I chose Satex X55 because well it looked cool, I had a lot of recommendations from people and I just wanted something that was high quality and would give me the feel of flying one of these great starships. So let's take a look at the HOTUS that I have purchased. This is the X-55 on Satex website. It runs about $199 US. I'm not sure what you can get it for overseas. But it's an amazing joystick. And I've been using it for, well, I guess since about two or three weeks after it came out. I've had nothing but success with it. Although, I did have a couple of problems with the computer and its USB ports when I first got it. But all those are now gone. So if you're looking for a great joystick, I could highly recommend this one after using it for the last, uh, I guess, six or eight months. Maybe less. I can't remember exactly when I got it. I've already done a Let's Pew Pew How to Fly with the X-55, but that was before they started giving us some controls inside of the game. So what I want to do first is show you the first place that you should go before you start to configure this in Star Citizen's Arena Commander. Alrighty folks, you don't get inside of any aircraft and I'm sure you wouldn't get inside of any spacecraft without reading the pilot's guide, the aircraft maintenance manual, whatever it might be. Something to teach you how to fly. There's a lot of information inside of this manual. And let me skip right over to some of the more important things, okay? Now way back in the day when you would buy a video game from Babbage's or EB Games or wherever you might be buying them, one of the first things you would do is open up the manual and take a look at the keyboard control card and see how things were working. In this situation, right up on top, on the right, you see the mapping layout of how they've decided to put things on the X-55. Now, depending on your grip, depending on how big your hand is and the distance between your thumb and forefinger and all these wonderful things, you may want to take a look at these built-in key maps to see if you might want to change them. I definitely did. The second piece, as you're seeing here, is there's a lot of keys on the keyboard. And they give you an idea of some of the functions that you might want to use inside of the game. Let's move on to the next step. Here on page 26, there is a feature in the upper right-hand corner that's explained called Enhanced Stick Precision. It's going to be very important. It's kind of like an automatic curve as your lead or the pipper that you're trying to put over to your target starts to converge, it's going to automatically um, give you a bigger curve, meaning that there's going to be less sensitivity in the joystick. So you don't overshoot or over control the spaceship as you're trying to line it up for firing. Currently what I've found is that this feature is turned off when you configure the X-55 as your main controller. So you have to go in and you have to turn it on. I'm using version 1.1 for this tutorial as it should be out by the time you're watching this. This is a template that I use to figure out which button is which when I'm trying to program them. So on the right hand side you'll have the stick and you'll see the three different hats and all the buttons numbered. And the black, red, and green on the top are definitely 100% associated with the black, red, and green on the stick itself. On the other side, on the left, you'll see a purple and a blue switch, and those are depicted just below it. So just get an idea of what these are, because when you are going through the different key mapping configuration utilities inside of the game, you're going to want to know which button is associated with which when you first load that profile. Here's an example. Unfortunately this one's for Elite Dangerous, but this person actually wrote down what each thing was. Alright, I will be jumping on to the next portion now. Alright, for this next part we're going to be in the hangar, and specifically we're going to be in the control options. 
We're going to take a look at that right now, and I'm going to first explain how to load the standard map that they give you, and then I'm going to show you some things to alter it to make it work for you. First place that we're going to stop is going to be the first page that comes up in options. I want to talk about two of these items. There's flight lead, PIP reticle, and flight targeting ESP. So the flight lead PIP reticle is a different reticle or the standard pipper that you get when you're trying to fire on somebody. So right now, without this on, the pipper kind of leads, be well, lags behind you and shows you the impact points on the spacecraft that you're firing at. The flight lead pip reticle puts a target on the uh, on the spacecraft that you're firing at and you have to match up the pipper in front of you on there. Still lagging behind it, but for some people that makes it easier. Now being that I've been flying military sims for a long time, I'm used to the standard pipper that they have now. The only thing different about it is they would probably it would be nice if they had a bigger pipper that showed ammunition left in your ballistic weapons and distance to target. Uh, it helps, believe me, not a lot, but it does help. Flight targeting ESP, enhanced stick precision. It kind of works like curves, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. As the pipper is on the target or approaching the target, it'll reduce the sensitivity of your joystick so you don't overshoot it. This is a very, very good way of gaining that extra bit of precision on your joystick for those people that use things like the X-55, which we're talking about today, X-52s, or even the Logitech Wingman Extreme. All right, let's go over to key binding. So I've already bound my, my keys, but I'm going to go in and show you what to do on your own. So the first thing is to get all the way over to Joystick HOTUS, Advanced Controls Customization, Control Profiles, and then over here, you select X55, joystick goes in the first, and then joystick one goes in the second. Okay, that's basically it. Okay, that's how you set it up, and then you hit import. It'll import that keyboard, that joystick profile, and everything will be set up for you. Now, some things I have changed. I'm just going to show you some things that are in here. Okay, here's cockpit. Remember the key map that I showed you, for, or a button map I showed you? Button 18, input 2, input 2 is your throttle. Button 13, input 2, these are two toggle switches on the throttle. Eject and lights being on there, to me, that's a good place for them. But now let's take a look at something different. Let's look at movement, okay? The standard movement over here maps Z rotation to roll, and it maps raw yaw to X. I changed these, and the reason why I changed these is I like to fly the spacecraft like a traditional fighter. Now, there's many of you out there that say, you know, you should yaw instead of um, instead of roll on the X axis. That's true, up until the point that they start changing that. Right now, there's no G effects in yaw. They've been adding them little by little. But in actuality, the human body is not set up to take side-to-side -side stress. Back in physiological aspects of flight, when I was going for my aeronautics degree, they talk about how pilots would get killed by missiles blowing up next to them because that instant 8 Gs of acceleration laterally would rip the heart away from the aorta. Now, I don't want to talk about realism and stuff like that because I'm no, I know that Chris is looking for that but I expect that at some point yaw is going to start having G effects just like the uh, roll and pitch are but until then fly the way that you want because that's what this game is about setting it up the way you want now I do not have a button to put this to I'm still thinking about it but if you see where it says swap yaw and roll there are many opportunities where this would be a good idea and I'm gonna to have to look for a button on my key map that would make sense there right now I would say it would probably be speed brake I never use my speed brake and 
I can see many instances where yaw would come in handy to be on that axis, especially when decoupled. So I will think about getting this in there very shortly. Talking about decoupled, when you look over here where it says decoupled mode toggle, the standard key map for the X55 puts this on the base of your throttle at the very bottom of it, which means that in combat you have to take your hand off the throttle hit the button and put your hand back on the throttle. I use the pinky switch, which is the one with the really long trigger that sticks up way in front of the joystick, not the pinky one that's against the actual stick. And the reason I do this is because decoupled mode, you're going to want to use it from time to time, and this definitely makes it a lot easier. Learning how to truly fight in decoupled mode is going to set you apart from the rest in this game. So having this changed to quickly deactivate it or activate it will definitely make things a lot easier for you. I see decoupled mode being a lot better fighting against larger ships that can't keep up with you so you can strafe down the side of it. I remember doing that in my Arrow in Wing Commander 3. It was a, it was a rip-roaring time, let me tell you. All right, the next piece I'm going to talk about is strafing. Strafing is when you're moving laterally or vertically, so it's different types of moving. It's not pitch, yaw, or roll. It's the other three axes, which are left, right, up, and down. That's actually two, two axes, right? So what I think that you can do here is to copy something off of Elite Dangerous. I work better thinking about this with my thumb because I'm playing two games. So there's two thumb hats that are on the throttle. There's an upper and a lower that's just below that rotary switch. The upper one I set to strafing and the lower one I set to targeting. It's very simple for me to remember this. So I change the strafe up, down, left, right to the upper. One of those thumb switches on the throttle. And then I come down here to where it says targeting and I change that to the um, bottom one on my left thumb. So this is the way that I work. Now that leaves two hats on my right hand side for me to assign things. And that's going to come later on, okay? And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to suggest that you have your power when, once this becomes something that we can work with a lot better than we are now. But we have three power presets. You can use that in the upper one and then you have the uh, shields that you could use for the lower one. The second piece is to look at controls options. And we move directly over to the first joystick. I close out the inversion settings because I don't invert anything. And then I stop here and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about curves. Currently, we all use the same type of joystick if you're watching this, an X55, X52, some kind of HOTUS, right? And you bought it, and you didn't really know why you bought it. And I could tell you this, they're all wonderful with whichever one you bought. But currently, if you have an analog joystick, you're going to have the same amount of force moving left, right, up, down, twisting it all the time, okay? And it's going to increase linearly, which means the more I move to the left, the more it's going to increase. And it's going to increase on a flat line, okay? All right, so what a curve does, and we're going to click on one, so we could just change the sensitivity if we know what we're doing, but what a curve does is it curves the input values. So here we're looking at pitch. As I pull back on the stick, there's going to be a minor adjustment in my pitch at first, and then it's going to shoot right up, all right? And the reason why I do this is right up until about here, I don't want there to be that much pitch as I'm moving the joystick. I want to be very precise in my movements because it will allow me to line up my target better. And that's the same thing for roll and the same thing for yaw. Now pitch and roll I set at 20% and yaw I set at 10%. So I'm going to bring you in the game. I'm going to show you how this works. And this isn't all, but this is what I'm going to show you for today. All right, we're in the game. How about that? And we're just going to test out. Yes, it's working. Let's test out our decoupled mode. Oh, there must be somebody coming to the party. 
to coupled mode works. Now, if you look at the lower right hand corner of the HUD, you'll see coupled G safe, decoupled G safe, and at the very bottom, you'll see ComStab turned off. But now there's something new there, and it's ESP, and that comes from enabling the ESP on my joystick profile. Now, enhanced per stick precision is going to come into play in just a few moments. All right, let's get in. Since the last time I talked about the uh, Gladius, well, actually, I might have talked about it real quick in my Retaliator video by now. There's been an update to it, and it actually has a little bit more speed. Okay, here we go. You'll notice right there, I could go real fast, but now as I get closer to this guy and I get the pipper on him, my input actually starts to get slower. See that? And then it picks up again. So that gives me an opportunity to actually get him in my sights faster, but what I'm thinking is it doesn't give me exactly what I was thinking I wanted. The second piece is the curves, and I'm going to show you that. Here I go, I'm pulling back about 12 to 15 percent of my stick. You'll see me go faster, and as I go and pull it back faster, it actually starts giving my input a little bit faster. Same thing with roll. Roll is only on a 10 percent, and I've got a big dead zone, which we didn't talk about at this point. So I switched over to post commentating for this. What I was trying to show you here is how the curves worked and how the enhanced stick precision worked. And also giving you an idea of how my button changes have made it easier for me to play. What's happened is that we're inside of V1.1 and there's some other things going on here. Either they changed the joystick input, I suddenly stink, which I don't think that's the case or there was an improvement in the AI, which is always happening in this game. Anyhow, the improvements that we made by changing the few things that we did have made it much easier to fly the spacecraft. And I'm showing you different things here with the curves pulling back at uh, different values to show you how quickly it can turn. Now, in a fighter like the Gladius, setting up your curves is going to be important because it is very maneuverable and you want to get that precision for times that you're behind a bogey and you just want to unlo unleash everything you got. My issue right now with this ship is that it's just underarmed for the time being. Alright, let's close this out. Now that we're back in the hangar, let's have a little short conversation about dead zones. As joysticks age, they start to lose their springs and they start to also have a little bit of damage done to the pots inside them potentiometers, I think is what they're called, and you start to get a little bit of drift. This is one of the examples of something that would cause you to use a dead zone. The other one would be if you take, for instance, the Wingman Extreme, which is pictured, the X-52, X-55, and other joysticks with a twist for yaw. As you're mashing this stick around and pulling um, roll or yaw, whatever you're doing, you may be adding input to the Z axis while you're doing that. So you may want to add a, a dead zone so you don't get that input from the over controlling that you might be doing. So what you're looking at here is I use a standard 7% on my joystick and that is for the roll and pitch axis, which I have set to the X and Y, and my Z rotation I have set to 13. I learned this from another game that I played, which was X-Plane, and have decided to use it here, and it is actually working out very, very well for me. So dead zones, use them, play with them, set them, and they will help you out immensely. If you want to know if you need a dead zone, take your ship up, make sure you've taking care of all of the um, calibration that you could do for your ship. Let go of the stick and everything. Don't give it any kind of input. And if it rolls or pitches or yaws and you can't stop it, you may need a dead zone. So what I set out to do today was to just open your eyes and see that setting up your joystick controller no, is not as hard as you might think. The X-55 has a lot of buttons, a lot of bells and whistles on it, but you can make it into a tool that will help you win at the game. 
Now, one thing to remind you is that Chris has said they're going to do their best over time to even out all the control options to make sure that not one is better than the other. Well, that's not always going to be the case because it's kind of a give and take here, right? ESP was supposed to make it better for us, those of us that play the game with a joystick. But mouse and keyboard still have that precision that you're just not going to get with the joystick. <laughs> Setting up the controls to have the keys exactly where you want them on your joystick and making sure that you know what your dead zones are, your curves, and the different functions that you could add to it like ESP is going to greatly enhance your understanding of your joystick and Hoda's combination and thus make it easier for you to play the game. Remember, this is a game, and sometimes things can be a little bit overwhelming. I remember playing a game back in the 90s called Falcon, and uh, the book for that was probably about 300 pages on how to use the radar. And over time, I learned it, and it was like second nature after a while. Setting up your joystick is not going to be like that. It's going to be something that you do, you test, and you change occasionally to tweak it to make it better. I've been doing it for quite a while, and I found myself a, well, a, a method that works. I hope you find this video an ample replacement for my weekly State of the Games. I'll return next week with the State of the Game, episode 26. Now, I hope I gave you enough information here, and I'm just going to reiterate it again. Curves and dead zones are important. Make sure you understand them, go out there, and, and, and test them. Setting up your joystick correctly with the buttons mapped to the right functions with the right curves and dead zones is going to change the way that you play the game for the better. And like I said just a few moments ago, don't be scared. Have confidence. If you have any other questions about how to set up your X55, which also could mean how to set up the other joysticks that you might be using, even if it's a Wingman Extreme, please send them to starcitizenaa at gmail.com and I will answer them as quickly as I can. All right, guys, with that said, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.